the kind of atmosphere that was created from watching this legendary rivalry, I can only imagine what it would be like if we saw these teams face off in October. Yep, that's me. A couple months ago when some of the greatest MLB franchises faced off in a regular season series. The Dodgers and Yankees had faced off in three games in Los Angeles, where we witnessed the two best teams at the time go head to head to see who's better. Not only was both teams franchise history incredible, the players they had on their team now were just as great. We had Aaron Judge vs Shohei Otani, Juan Soto vs Mookie Betts, Tyler Glasnow vs Luis Hill, just baseball superstars competing to see who's better. Now we get to see these teams again, but this time on the biggest stage. But before we get into what both teams do so well, let's talk about how they got this far in the first place. The Dodgers have been one of the best MLB teams for the past couple of years now, shutting out all-star pitchers with superstar lineups. Having Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman, and Will Smith leading this team, combined with a great rotation that included Hall of Famer Clayton Kershaw and Walkie Brewer, this team has been atop the power rankings for quite some time now. However, every time they head into the playoffs, the Dodgers just fall off the face of the earth, being incredibly disappointing. Part of that is due to injuries, but the other part is due to subpar play by their stars. In last year's division series against the Arizona Diamondbacks, the front runners for the MVP award, Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman, combined to go 1 for 21 at the plate eventually getting swept by the National League champions. The Dodgers knew they needed to get better in the offseason, and they did it in the most Los Angeles way. The Dodgers spent over a billion dollars in the offseason, getting all-star level guys like Tyler Glasnow, Teoscar Hernandez, and Yoshinobu Yamamoto. But they don't compare to the last guy that made a splash in LA. The Dodgers signed two-way superstar and Japanese phenom Shohei Otani to a record-breaking 10 years $700 million deal. The Dodgers seem set to head into the season now, having depth at every position and superstars every which way you turn. There's not a flaw in this lineup where a team can take a breath and say, okay, here's an easy out. There also wasn't a time where you can play the Dodgers in a series and say to yourself, this pitcher is not good, we're going to have a hitting parade. This Dodgers team was primed for the World Series if they can stay healthy. But key phrase, if they can stay healthy. The Dodgers start the season off relatively slow, having to get used to these new additions and still getting guys back from injury. But they turned it up at the midseason point, winning as much as 8 games in a row and taking a commanding lead of the NL West. But in classic Dodger fashion, injuries began to pile up. Third baseman slugger Max Muncy suffered an oblique strain in May and was sidelined until August. Rocket arm reliever Bruce Dark Gratterall suffered a few injuries that has kept him out of game. Young starter Gavin Stone is out for the rest of this season and the next one due to a shoulder injury. Tyler Glasnow was out for the rest of the season from a sprained elbow. Yoshinobu Yamamoto was out for a few months from a rotator cuff strain. And even the most durable MLB player Freddie Freeman was sidelined for an ankle sprain. Injury after injury the Dodgers suffered. But this is what they prepared for. Getting depth throughout their roster. They finished with the best record in the entire MLB despite everything that happened during the season. But records don't matter in the postseason. The Dodgers have been historically bad in recent playoffs, getting bounced out in the early rounds almost every year for the past 4 years. And this year was looking like the same, as they faced their worst matchup in the San Diego Padres in the first round. The Dodgers started off with a win, but quickly went down in the series after 2 straight from the Padres, facing elimination once again against their NL West rival. The Dodgers went with a bullpen game, while the Padres went with their ace Dylan Cease on short rest in hopes of finishing the series in San Diego. It was a terrible decision, as Cease went on to give up 3 runs in less than 2 innings and lose the game 8-0, tying the series heading back to Los Angeles. Now going back with the day 1 starter Yoshinobu Yamamoto, the Dodgers shut out the Padres once again to win 2-0 and clinch their first playoff series since 2021. After a hard fought divisional series, we get the battle of the two biggest cities in America, LA versus New York. The Mets just made light work of the Philadelphia Phillies, and we're looking like a completely different team in the postseason. Their pitching has been lights out, and they have what looks to be the National League MVP runner up and Francisco Lindor leading their team. 
But they're going against the Los Angeles Dodgers, who have been on a different level this postseason. The series starts with a pitching gem from Jack Flaherty that sees him go in 7 scoreless innings, only allowing 2 hits and 2 walks that gave the Dodgers the 9-0 win. The Mets then came back in the second game, being led by their bullpen and winning game 2, 7-3. After being in Los Angeles, both teams head off to New York, where one team was clearly better than the other. The Dodgers took the first two games very easily, winning the first game 8-0 and the second game 10-2. The New York crowd proved to be nothing for the Dodgers, only scoring two runs in the first two games in Queens. But now after facing elimination in the first series, the Dodgers now have a healthy lead, being up 3-1 with nothing to worry about. The Mets take Game 5, winning 12-6 to send the series back to LA. But unfortunately for them, the Dodgers closed the series, sending New York packing and heading to the World Series since they won back in 2020. Full of joy and excitement, the Dodgers' big spending and hard work finally paid off. Although it's not going to be easy, as there is going against the second best team in the league and former New York Borough rival, the New York Yankees. The Yankees before the season were stuck in no man's land. They were coming off 6 straight playoff appearances from 2017 to 2022. Then all of a sudden, the Yankees turned from one of the best teams in the American League to one of the worst finishing 4th in the AL East and missing the playoffs for the first time since 2016. It seemed like Aaron Judge was wasting his prime in New York, heading into his contract year, so it was time to see if he can go elsewhere to win. That's how close New York was to scrapping this World Series appearance. But instead of losing Judge, the Yankees showed they wanted them back, trading for outfielders Trent Grisham, Alex Verdugo, and superstar Juan Soto in hopes of doing more the next season. They strut out almost the same pitching staff as last year with a couple new additions from their farm system, but the Yankees were ready to go now. The Yankees finished the season with a 94-68 record, having the one seed heading into the postseason. Aaron Judge had a monster MVP season, while Juan Soto did the same, complementing each other nicely. But of course, it's not only the superstars that get it done. The rest of the team did great as well. Guys like Anthony Volpe, Luis Hill, Garrett Cole and Carlos Rodon helped this team in more ways than not. Their first playoff matchup was against the Kansas City Royals, led by young superstar Bobby Witt Jr. The Yankees easily took the series, winning 3 out of 4 games to head to the AL Championship Series. Their pitching was on another level, holding Bobby Witt to only 2 hits in all 4 games. Then they faced the surprise number 2 seed, Cleveland Guardians, in hopes of getting to their first World Series since 2009. And just like the first series versus the Royals, the Yankees pitching dominated Guardians hitters and won the series 4-1. This postseason has been stupidly easy for the Yankees, questioning whether their road to the World Series is legitimate. But now that we got into how each team got to where they're at, let's see what each team does so well. The Dodgers went into the season knowing that their pitchers will get hurt. It happens every year, so instead of being surprised when it happens, Let's prepare for it, the Dodgers say. The Dodgers front office said their hitting is going to overpower their pitching deficiencies, and that's exactly what it does. Having guys like Shohei Otani, Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman, and surprise acquisitions like Tommy Edmond and Kike Hernandez, this team scores runs by the dozen. They've scored 7 or more runs in 7 of their 11 playoff games, absolutely destroying pitchers. It's the exact opposite approach of the Yankees with them being more pitching dominant than hitting. Having guys like Garrett Cole, Luis Hill, Tommy Canely, Carlos Rodon, and so many more guys in the rotation and bullpen, the Yankees haven't given up 2 or less runs in 4 of their 9 playoff games. It's the classic pitching versus hitting matchup we got here. As for what team comes out on top, I think it comes down to playoff performers. On the Dodgers side, they have guys with tremendous playoff and World Series experience. Guys like Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman, Kike Hernandez, Max Muncy, and Walker Bueller, just to name a few. However, on the Yankee side, they've done such big changes in their roster that this is the farthest that most of them have ever been. Juan Soto has that World Series experience, but outside of that, these guys have never seen that kind of atmosphere. These teams are very evenly matched in my opinion. It just comes down to who can show up in the postseason, and the Dodgers players have showed it time and time again. For that, 
I got the Dodgers taking the series in six. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. All that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys later.